Well, we bought the house because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I mean, how many chances do you have to not only own a piece of American history, but also own paranormal history? Yeah. You know, so it was like a no-brainer for us. The reason it, it meant so much to us was because we are paranormal researchers. I mean, that's, that's our job, that's our passion, you know, and to be able to own something like this and wake up and do it on a continual basis and basically do something that nobody else is doing or had an opportunity to do. Right. Uh, and know. to share it with other people like us. I mean, to be able to give other people the opportunity, we would have liked the opportunity in their position. I mean, this is the house that inspired The Conjuring. Yeah. You know, and not too many people can say that. You know, the, the number one horror movie of all time was based off of events, real life events that happened in this house. Um, so far, the house itself has been pretty active, but it hasn't been anything scary. Lots of things have happened, lots of things that, that have scared us in the moment, but most of the time we high-five each other after it because it's exciting. Some of the things that we've been experiencing here in the house, um, disembodied voices, uh, EVPs, electric voice phenomenon, uh, we've had... Uh, footsteps, uh, black masses. Uh, Body figure. Yeah, we had a shadow figure. Uh, what else? Doors opening. Doors opening and closing. Objects moving. Yeah, um, things flying off shelves. I mean, it's, it's almost like a mix of like poltergeist activity and, you know, just traditional hauntings and almost like, you know, you almost have, God, how, how could you put it? I mean... It's almost like a, an intelligent haunt and a residual haunt all in one. Right. So. For me, I don't like to be in any part of the house alone. <laughs> I'm comfortable as long as somebody's with me. Um, the part of the house that creeps me out the most is definitely the um, middle bedroom upstairs. I can walk through it, but that's about it. You ask me to stand in there for a long period of time, and that's a no-go. Um, the middle bedroom when the parents lived here was uh, a bedroom for two of the girls, one of which for sure I know is Cindy, mm -hmm. only because she talks about the scary experiences she had in there. And that bedroom to me just feels heavy. Yeah, there's something not right with that bedroom. Yeah, to me that just doesn't, that bedroom has something that just doesn't feel right, not comfortable. The whole purpose of us buying this to share it with others, I mean, this is our paranormal Disney World. Um, this is where me and my wife actually witnessed the shadow figure uh, looking at us as we were laying in bed one night and we both witnessed it. We weren't aware each other were awake. Um, so that was really neat because that was really the time I think my wife really went from being a skeptic to, okay, this for sure is real and it formed into like a giant like just odulating cloud and he said it moved around the room in here and then it just dissipated and it freaked him out enough to where I had to have my sister come up from New York to pick him up and bring him up to New Hampshire for my parents to come down from Maine to pick him up and bring him home two days earlier than he was supposed to leave and it's not a shock you know all these tabloids and stuff saying Oh, what did you think you were getting yourself into? I knew what we were getting ourselves into. Me and my wife have been doing this long enough. We just, how many times have people gone to these places like the Lizzie Borden house or, or something like that and pay like thousands of dollars and nothing happens? We didn't think from night one stuff would start happening like it has. And right now it's going down the same path to what the parents described. Everything's playful to a point. And I'm worried that it's going to get to that point. And I want to try to stop it before it gets to that point. So this is the only way I know how. So. And that's what concerns me because, you know, it's already taken on these shapes, dark figures, uh, dark masses, dark mists, um, black smoke. You know, do I have to be concerned about my kids? Absolutely. Do I have to be concerned about my wife? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, so it's trying to take it one day at a time, but at the same time, trying to get to the bottom of it 
and not trying to lose our minds or losing our family life over it. First time we walked through the property and the house, we absolutely fell in love with it. But that definitely changed quickly after purchasing the home and spending more time here. Well, we've had a lot of little things happen, just the doors opening, things that you hear, things that you feel. The biggest thing, the biggest eye opener for me at this point was definitely the black shadow apparition figure that was in the doorway one night when Corey and I were sleeping. Both, both of us saw it at the same time and that was very scary, heart stopping and exciting all at once. That was, um, the more we're in the house, the more active it's getting. It kind of feels like it could be going on the same line as the way the parents were when they were living at the house. So we are, we're taking our time, investigating, figuring out what's going on with the house first. Uh, Kylo definitely loved the house at first. Uh, we visited the house twice with him before we purchased the home. He was very excited. Um, um, he had had things happen in the beginning that made him a little nervous. Um, doors opening, hearing stuff, being in a room by himself. He was kind of nervous hearing things outside the door. Uh, the major experience for him was one night spending the night and he saw a black shadow come over him while he was sleeping. Didn't tell us about it at first. We were supposed to spend the weekend here. He uh, wanted to go home the next day. Didn't really tell us why, just was ready to go home. Uh, Corey's sister Katie picked him up on her way through. Um, the plan right now is to take it day by day. Um, I mean, I was very excited. I mean, you uh, look back to the date where um, my father said, would you like to buy the Condren house? You think to yourself, like the real Condren house, like the real actual deal one. As I went to go look up on the ceiling and you could just see this black mist just hovering right over us. And you're thinking to yourself like, wow, did that actually just happen or not? Me forever thinking about it now that I just don't want to be back in the house. Um, I am worried about my parents' safety because if you look back to like the parents and the, the Warrens investigating here, you know what happened here and I don't want the same thing happen to my parents. I don't, I don't want to go back in the Conjuring House, not at all. There's something in there that just completely terrified me that makes me just not want to come back here. I was in the room by myself and I heard a growl, so that definitely caught me off guard. And I had... I heard that. Yeah, just normal shit, just don't pay attention to it, it's okay. It came from that I room. know it did, it's okay, it's, it happens all the time. <laughs>